John in Character presents Hidden Heroes of History. Stories that make you wonder, Hey, how did I not know that? Featuring your historian in chief, Jonathan Cormer. Ahem. <clears throat> oh, uh, and his trusty hedgehog sidekick, Reginald T. Hedgehog. Hey, listeners, a quick message before you hear the story of this incredible hero of history. This episode includes some discussion of slavery and systemic racism. For more resources on talking about these topics as a family, go to the show notes or episode webpage at johnincharacter.com. Now, where is that hedgehog run off to? Reg? Reg? Reg! Ah! Ah! Huh. No need to yell, Jonathan. I'm right here. Huh. I, I swear you weren't there a second ago. Where did you come from? Outside, of course. Please don't scare me like that. Me? Scare you? Well, we were supposed to start this episode over an hour ago, Reg. What have you been doing? I was enjoying the beauty of nature, of course. You can do that any time, Reg. I like to take every opportunity I can, good sir. And you should, too. I mean, have you ever stopped to smell the roses? I mean, wandered round to waft the wisteria? I don't know if I've paused to pick a pansy. Okay, okay. I could stand to spend a little more time with the trees. Thank you. In fact, we'll be talking a lot about the power of nature today. Really? Then ultimately I've come prepared, haven't I? Our hidden hero once said, When I touch that flower, I am not merely touching that flower. I am touching infinity. To infinity and beyond! Right, Reg. He also once said, All flowers talk to me, and so do hundreds of little living things in the woods. I learn what I know by watching and loving everything. You know, I did take the time to talk to tulips on my way in, and they were wonderfully chatty little things. You just have to listen. Well, you would have gotten along very well with our next hidden hero of history, Reg. Don't hold out on me any longer, Jonathan. Who is this fine fellow? George Washington Carver Mr. Carver was an American agricultural scientist, botanist, and inventor. Agriculture? You mean like the science and art of growing and caring for plants and livestock? That's right, Reg. I knew it! From peeking at your notes. Oh, excellent! I can't wait to hear the story. Because Mr. Carver was born into slavery, his exact date of birth is not known, though it is believed he was born in 1864 or 1865. Uh, can you tell us more about slavery, Jonathan? I want to understand it better myself. Well, Reg, slavery is a system that legally allowed people to own, buy, and sell other individuals, as well as force them into doing labor. An enslaved person did not have their freedom and was often in danger of being killed. We are still learning from and confronting the consequences of slavery in our country, to this very day. What a terrible thing. It is, Reg. People who were forced into slavery received a lot of harsh treatment, were often separated from their families, and sometimes even kidnapped, which is what happened to Mr. Carver, his brother James, and his mother. Eventually, Mr. Carver lost both his parents while his family was enslaved. Because of this, when slavery was abolished, Mr. Carver and James had to stay with the family that enslaved them. This was also around the time that Mr. Carver learned how to create simple herbal medicines, which began to form his fascination with plants. Ah, so he loved plants from early on. Very much so. Young George became known as the plant doctor because he was able to determine how to improve the health of gardens. A true genius. Mr. Carver was incredibly smart and had a thirst for knowledge. But another result of slavery and the racial injustice in our country was that even though he was free, 
schools and many other aspects of daily life were still very segregated. Segregation was forced separation, so African American children could not go to the same schools as white children. It also impacted other areas of life stores, lunch counters, jobs, churches, parks, and more. Oh dear. Because of this, there was only one school he could access, nine miles from where he was living, and he walked all the way there to attend classes, only to find that the school was closed for the night by the time he arrived. Oh, but don't worry, Reg. The next morning, Mr. Carver met a woman named Mariah Watkins, who rented him a room so he could stay and go to school. Ms. Watkins encouraged him to learn everything he could and then give back to the community. Very sound advice. I myself often take my superior skills and share them with the young hedgehog community. Why am I not surprised? I dare say it is important to pass on my wisdom to the youth. Why, just the other day, young Percival Prickleston, of the Tree Stump Pricklestons, came up to me and asked for a tutorial on, um, Reg, Reg, uh, maybe you can tell me the story another time. Ah, right, yes. Uh, carry on. This wasn't the last time Mr. Carver would face a challenge when pursuing his education. No? No. Mr. Carver impressed Highland Presbyterian College in Kansas with his application essay, and they granted him a full scholarship. But when he arrived at the school, he was turned away because he was a black man. The school should be ashamed. They should, Reg. And it's one of the many reasons why we continue fighting today, so that we build a future where no one is denied these human rights again. Indubitably. Over the next few years, Mr. Carver held a variety of jobs, working wherever he could in order to save up to pay tuition. Did he ever get the chance to go to college? It sounds like he really valued education. You would be right, Reg. He deeply valued it throughout his career. He saved his money and continued to search for his chance at college. I'm on pins and needles. Did he find a school? Indeed he did. In 1888... Mr. Carver was the first African-American student to attend Simpson College in Iowa. He studied art and piano. Art and piano, hmm? Now, how did he get into science and invention from art and piano? I'm so glad you asked, Reg. He had a teacher who saw how intricate and detailed his paintings of plants and flowers were and encouraged him to apply to Iowa State Agriculture School to study botany. Botany, you say? Mm, botany, yes, botany, of course. Um, botany, that certainly adds up. Um, botany. You don't know what botany is, do you? I most certainly do. Not. I do not, no. Well, that's all right, Reg. Botany is the science of plants. And a botanist is a person who studies plants, tries to understand how they work, and what they can be used for in our everyday lives. Ooh, I'd love to meet a botanist someday. We can get together and laugh with the lilies. At Iowa State, Mr. Carver was the first African-American student to earn his Bachelor of Science in 1894. His professors were so impressed by his work, they asked him to be on their faculty while working on his master's degree, which he earned in 1896. What excitement! Oh, you haven't heard the most exciting parts. Wait until I tell you everything he did with his degrees. Tell me more, tell me more. Well, Mr. Carver worked as an assistant botanist at the Iowa State University Experiment Station. His research caught the attention of Booker T. Washington, head of the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, one of the first African-American institutions. Mr. Washington was also an incredibly prominent author, educator, and advisor to various presidents of the United States. That's right, Reg. I peeked at your notes again. In 1896, Mr. Carver became head of the Agricultural and Dairy Department at Tuskegee, where he remained for the rest of his long career, a career he was truly passionate about. Long career, you say? He really must have accomplished some thrilling things. That's right. First of all, he was extremely interested in mycology, which is the study of fungi. 
like mushrooms. Exactly. Mr. Carver even collected and studied many species of fungi, two of which were named after him. Wow! What a career! Studying plants and having his name live on in a few of the world's living things. Oh, I'm not done sharing his resume, Reg. We've only scratched the surface. Goodness! Well, carry on. His research was never just about science, but about the impact that it might have on people's lives, particularly African American people of the South and areas that relied on agriculture to survive. At the time, cotton was the main crop being grown in the South, but it destroyed the land after one harvest. So he taught many farmers how to grow soybeans, sweet potatoes, and other crops that helped enrich the soil and created hundreds of products. He popularized new crops by researching the many different ways they could be used in order to help farmers expand and succeed. Guess one crop that he is very well known for. Hmm.、Um, corn. Guess again. Lettuce again. Oh, just spill the beans. Well, it wasn't beans either. It was peanuts. Peanuts, those delightful legumes. That's right. He is credited with discovering over three hundred uses for the peanut, like flour, paste, insulation, paper, cheese, milk, coffee, soap, shaving cream, and skin lotion. Who knew? From 1915 to 1923, Mr. Carver also researched and experimented with new uses for sweet potatoes, soybeans, pecans, and other crops. He refined and created so much of what we still use today: bleach, paper, ink, plastic. The list goes on. What success! Another fun fact: Have you heard of Henry Ford? An innovator in the automobile industry. That's right, Reg. He was one of the main guys producing cars in a time before cars were as popular as they are now. Mr. Carver and Mr. Ford were friends. They both shared an interest in the uses of crops like peanuts and soybeans to make plastics, paint, fuel, and other products. Mr. Ford even wanted to hire Mr. Carver to work with him full time, but Mr. Carver declined. Who knew? During World War II, the pair developed a soybean alternative to rubber to help with limited supplies. After weeks of experiments, Mr. Carver and Mr. Ford produced a successful replacement using a plant called goldenrod. Well, that's certainly enough for one person to accomplish in a lifetime. But Mr. Carver accomplished so much more than I've even shared here. He is truly responsible for bringing new life to farms in the South, and is responsible for so many things that impact our lives today. A person who has done more than we can fit into this one short episode. It's true, Reg. Like so many of our hidden heroes, there are lots of incredible stories and accomplishments that make up his life. He spent much of his later years sharing his deep knowledge as a botanist, and encouraging the importance of education for all. As a creature that is smaller in stature, I truly love how passionate he seems about some of the world's smaller things, and the bigger things too. He used his celebrity to speak on racial injustice and the importance of racial harmony. His work and words truly made the world a better place. Working towards a future where no one is turned away from getting an education or work based on their race, exactly. And he certainly left a legacy for all young scientists and farmers who have followed in his footsteps. I say that was truly delightful, Jonathan. Yet again. And I can think of only one way to celebrate: a party with the petunias. Now that's the spirit. Hidden Heroes of History is a John and Character production. This story was written by Molly Murphy and performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Studio Circle Recordings. 
For more information about today's hero, go to johnincharacter.com. Oh, and if our storytelling brings you some joy, and a few laughs, we'd be so grateful if you'd help us live happily ever after by writing a review. It's one of the best ways for others to find our geeky tales. But before you go, please hit the subscribe button so future episodes will automatically show up in your podcast library. Now, go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next Once Upon a Time.